Hey guys, let's get straight to the point. Today, I'm going to show you the app that I use on my Mac computer for photo editing that is completely free compared to Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One or any other apps or programs that you have to pay either one time fee or a subscription. The app is the Photos app on the Mac computer, the built in Photos app that most people just use for photo viewing instead of photo editing. But the Photos app is actually really, really powerful. It has a lot of features that you see on professional uh, programs or apps compared to, let's say, Photoshop or Lightroom. And let's jump straight into it. The first thing I'm going to show you guys is to how to import raw photos into your Mac computer. It's actually really weird that they only have one way. At least that's the only way I found because I'm going to show you my screen right now. If you drag and drop any photos, even if it's a raw photo from your SD card or hard drive into the Photos app, it will convert it into JPEG. So there's no way that you can edit the raw photos if you drag and drop the photos directly into the Photos app. So what you need to do is to actually open up the Photos app and you, you can see that I have some photos imported already. What you need to do, it uh, it's on the left hand side, you see where devices, that should be where you your SD card is at. And you'll see that it's showing me the thumbnails of the images. You will notice that each photo has a J in front or on top of it. That is because I was shooting with RAW plus JPEG on my camera. So that means if I import that photo, the JPEG and the RAW will be imported as well. So it doesn't really matter if you um, can see the raw photo on the uh, the photos right now because whatever you click it's going to be raw plus jpeg so it's really really simple actually but there's one catch when you're importing photos like this you can't really see the full size photos on the screen because no matter how close you zoom in this is the max so this is a big drawback of this um, app for photo editing that's one thing I'm going to show you how to import some photos. I'm going to click on some photos here and it's just as simple as clicking and clicking on the import selected after. So I'm just going to quickly import some photos and show you guys how I edit the photos here. So after selecting all the photos that you want, you just need to click on import, however number selected. Uh, if you want to import everything that is new compared to the last time you imported onto your Mac, you can just select import all new photos, but just watch out for the storage space on your Mac computer. By the way, this Mac is 12, uh, not 12 years old. It's 2012 MacBook Pro 13 inch. So this is a 10 year old MacBook. Uh, now it's like, well, like 2022. So it's a 10 year old MacBook Pro and it still has the same editing adjustments that you can do. The software that I'm running on this Mac is uh, Catalina 10.15.7, which is not the latest one, but it still has the same photo editing adjustments that you can do. So after selecting all the photos that you want to import, you just click on import, whatever selected, and it will take a little bit of time, not super long. You can see that the photos are showing up already. And these are JPEGs. The thumbnails are going to be JPEGs. So what you need to do is to remember to click onto the photo and select image at the top and select use raw as original or else you'll be editing the JPEGs instead of the raw photos. You can tell by having the J letter, the letter J on the photo, that means this is a JPEG photo that you are editing. Even if you go open up the photo and select edit, it will still just edit the JPEG. By the way, these photos are taken by my Fujifilm X Pro 2 with the 56 millimeter f1.2 lens, which is an amazing lens. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to start editing. You just need to open up the image. Remember, if you see a J here, you have to go to image and select use raw as original. Once you selected it, you will see that the photos just flip and shows you like it's showing you like different colors and different contrasts. 
That is because the raw photo captured a little bit more information compared to the JPEG, which was uh, having the uh, Fujifilm film simulation applied to it. So this is the raw photo. You can tell by the letter R on the photo right now, even if you exit out of this photo, it's going to show you that this is a raw photo. So what you need to do now is, of course, you click on to edit on the right hand side and you will see all the adjustments on the right hand side. You can kind of tell that it's really sophisticated. It's not the editing or adjustments you will see on iPhones or iPads where you have just highlight shadows, contrast and things like that. Those little sliders, you actually have curves that you can use. So let's jump straight into it. So what I would suggest you to do is not to use auto for everything. And I'll show you which one I would suggest you to use auto because it's actually not bad at all. For light, which is the brightness of the picture, I wouldn't suggest you to use auto because when you use auto, it'll just, oh, this one is pretty good. But sometimes when you select auto, it will just brighten up the subject's face and then the entire image or the background will be blown out. So try not to do that. So once you did some adjustment, you can actually reverse it by clicking onto the uh, undo button. This one will undo everything or you can use command uh, Z to undo this, uh, the previous step. But I'm just going to re, uh, remove that. And this for the light section, you actually want to try using the slider because it's actually pretty good. So if I want the image to be a little bit darker than I want, I'm just going to slide that slider to the left. You can see that the subject's face is not being darkened because the slider automatically adjusts for skin tone, which is really cool. So this is what I would like to use. Not auto, but the slider at the top. So you can see that all the adjustments at the bottoms are doing its job. For these adjustments, I will quickly go through them. Uh, brilliance is actually the brightness kind of contrast between the shadows and highlights, exposure, the overall brightness of the image. Highlight is basically the brightest part of the image. If you have something that is too bright, let's say in the background, you can drag this and darken whatever that is too bright. But you'll notice that the image will start getting muddy if you do it too much. So I'm just going to remove that. And shadow, basically, it's going to adjust the darkest part of the image. So I'll do the shadow a little bit more than the slider did. And brightness, I don't know why it's similar to brilliance. So brilliance and brightness, usually we don't see them in Lightroom or other photo editing app. But this, again, is almost like the contrast of the shadow and highlight. I think this is pretty good. Contrast, basically the difference between the darkest part of the image or uh, and the uh, lightest part of the image. So if you drag it too much, it'll be really like contrasty and crunchy. I don't like that, especially for portrait photos. Black points, basically the black parts of the image. If you want to make a faded look, you can slide the slider to the left to lift the darkest part or the black part of the image. But that's okay. I want to keep this as natural as I can. During editing, you can actually select or click this icon at the top left to see what the original photo was. So this is original. If I hold on to the to that button, if I let go, it will show you the adjustments. So that's about all I would do in terms of brightness of the image. I think it looks pretty good. Um, before I go into adjusting the uh, color saturations and stuff like that, usually what I would do is to do a curve onto the image. So if you have RGB curve, selected that is basically the regular tone curve. I'll lift the highlight a little bit, do a, a little bit of a S curve, but nothing really dramatic because I don't want to create that effect. Again, try not to adjust your photos too, too much. Even if it's a raw photo, it will still make it look unnatural and awkward unless you're going for a really creative look. But I'll talk about that um, using the Photos app when you are trying to create a more creative look. And some people, they will lift the shadows like this, but uh, for this photo purpose, I'm not going to do anything. So that's the curve. 
let's talk about this check mark right here. You can actually remove that adjustment by unclicking that check mark. You can see that this was before the tone curve was uh, adjusted. Now this is with the tone curve. So I added a little bit of a contrast to make the image a little bit crunchier. And now I will go back to colors or color. And this is one of the adjustments that I would suggest you to try to use auto. Again, try to use auto if it doesn't look natural, just undo it. So I'm just going to select auto. You can tell that it's actually not bad. This is after the adjustment. It's really adding a lot of colors into the image. And it makes everything looks natural and healthy. So saturation, as simple as turning up the down, up or down the saturation of the entire image. You can tone it down if your original raw photo, for whatever reason, the, uh, the color is too much. And contrast is the contrast between colors. So it's not contrast between the brightest part and the darkest part of the image. So contrast here on the color is the contrast between different colors. So I will try to turn it up a little bit higher if you're using raw photos because it makes the color pop. And cast, for some reason, this is similar to like temperature, like for white balance, for whatever reason. If I turn it up to the, uh, to the right side to, uh, to the image, it's actually turning the image yellow and green. And then the other side is blue and magenta for whatever reason. But I usually don't touch that because I will adjust the white balance. So with white balance, if your camera is uh, set to the wrong white balance when you are taking the photo. That's why you use a RAW as a backup because RAW will capture all the information and white balance should be um, adjustable in post. So this is the section where I will adjust the white balance. And this one again, you can try to use auto because it's actually not bad. So if I use auto, you can tell that everything looks really natural still. So if I uncheck it, you can tell that the background goes from a really blue green ish tint into a more natural tint. And again, it's just auto. I didn't do anything at all. Of course, if you want to fine tune it or adjust your own temperature and tint, you can do that by going into the temperature and tint. It will reset the auto settings and you can adjust it yourself. This is what I would do if I am doing it manually, but I'm just going to undo it and rely on auto again because it's fast. It's super quick. Um, for a lot of beginners, I wouldn't, um, I, I wouldn't be afraid of using auto first to practice your eyes to see how the image look like um, when the computer is analyzing the picture and give you a more natural look. Because uh, before you get used to all the programs and all the adjustments, you might have um, a, a, a difficult time to understand how natural color look, or uh, let's say, or what's a natural white or or natural gray or whatever color tone that you want to create. So I would suggest you to try auto, but later on, just try to do it manually so you can practice uh, how your eyes can see the photos. Uh, curves, I talked about that. So this is the normal tone curve. Of course, you can go into red, green, and blue channel tone curve to really add in colors or just the color at certain point uh, in certain uh, part of the image. So let's say if I go into red and I want to add in some green into the shadow, I'll just drag this part down. You can see that the shadows now have a little bit of a green tone into it. But I wouldn't touch this part if you're new to photo editing. Like that's really not that easy to understand. And I'm just going to undo that. For whatever reason, I think there's a bug. Um, the color tone curve or, or the tone curve, even if you undo anything, it's not going to show you the previous step. So it's kind of weird. So you might have to rely on the undo, completely undo button here uh, besides the auto button. So that's the curves. The next one is levels. This one, don't touch it for now because I get confused about this part too. Uh, again, this one has a RGB or a specific color channel of the image. So um, for the RGB, it's basically doing what the tone curve is doing. So if you want something um, 
crunchier, like for mid-tone, you can see that I was dragging the RGB middle point to the right. It adds in that contrast. Without that, you can tell that it's not as contrasty. So it's completely up to you. Try to play with it, but I wouldn't suggest you to touch it yet if you are new to um, editing photos. So I'm just going to undo it. Same thing with other color channels. Luminance is basically brightness um, of the image. So same thing. So try to explore this part, but I wouldn't suggest spending too much time uh, on levels because um, this tool is not available in some of the other photo editing app anyway. So I wouldn't touch that. Definition is basically um, texture or clarity of the image. It adds in that crunchiness of the image. Um, this is probably good for street photography, but not uh, portrait photos, you can see that if I drag the slider over, it makes everything super crunchy and contrasty. I don't like that for portrait photos, especially because like people want healthy and smooth skin tone and you, you're adding in like texture. That's, that's the opposite of usually what people want. The next one is really, really cool and important. Selective color is basically HSI for um, HSL, not HSI, HSL for other programs or apps. Uh, that's hue, saturation, and luminance. Uh, what happened is you can, as you can see, there's hue, saturation, and luminance. This will affect the specific color channel in the image, and you can adjust the saturation. Let's say if I select red, whatever that is in the image that is considered as red will give you the room or flexibility to adjust the saturation, hue, and luminous. You can see that here my friend's lips and the bag has a lot of red in there. So if I boost up the saturation, you can see that the bag is getting really red. And it's also affecting the skin of my friend because human skin tone has red in there. So don't do too, too, too crazy of an adjustment when it comes to hue, saturation, and luminous. Every time when I edit a photo, I try not to drag any slider too, too far. You can drag it far and then adjust it back. So try to go uh, too far and then come back. That's the way I would do it. But again, don't go too crazy about these. So what happened usually here? Um, luminance, again, adjust the, uh, the brightness of the red part because I've red selected. So you can see that the bag is getting brighter and the lips are getting brighter and also the face. And you can play around with other colors as well. There is a dropper here, and this will actually select a custom color of the image. So let's say if I'm putting this onto something more obvious, maybe this green, you can see that it's now adjusting just that green. So this one is a little bit more sophisticated. If you really have a color in the image that is really not um, the color from this color palette because this is super basic. This one only has like, what, six colors. Um, other apps, they usually have way more and it depends on what app you use. So if the colors that you want is not in this palette, then use the dropper to pick that color from the image. Usually what I would do, I usually don't spend too, too much time because this app is not for you to do too many photos anyway, but it's really powerful. As you can see, let me show you the original image first. This is without adjusting any selective color yet. This is the original, which is the raw photo, and this is the adjusted one. It's already looking really good. I don't know about you, but I think it looks really good already. And I'm sure your non-photographer friends or even uh, family or clients, they they will be happy about the result already. So what happened is usually I don't change the hue of my reds because um, if you change a hue, you're basically changing the color of red from a more yellow tone to a more magenta tone. So if I shift it to the left, you can see that it's turning red into purple. If I sh uh, shift it to the right, it's turning red to yellow or even green, which is kind of weird for a skin tone. So I usually don't touch that, but I will adjust the saturation, I want to add in a little bit of uh, color or increase the saturation of red to make the skin tone look healthier when it comes to uh, portrait photos. Again, unless you're doing something creative, um, then it's up to you to adjust the hue or not. And luminance, it really depends if you want to brighten up the, uh, the face of the, the person, maybe a little bit here. For yellow, this is, again, 
there's one trick that I usually use to see if that color is actually in the photo, because sometimes you don't have certain colors or you don't have that much of that color in that photo. I will select saturation and crank it up. And if it's like adjusting the photo or affecting the photo a lot, that means like there's a lot of yellow in there. So you can see that the yellow is in her hair face and also a little bit uh, on the staircase in the back. So I'm just going to reset it to zero. By the way, uh, the shortcut to reset everything to zero is to use your mouse to double click that uh, selection and then it will just bring everything back to zero. I can just go double, double click. So for yellow, usually what I would do is I would turn it to a little bit red to create a little bit of an, an orange, not too much again, and then increase the saturation. Maybe that's a little too red, something like that. And it really depends if I want to turn up the brightness because it looks pretty good already, but I will turn it up a little bit. So that's how much I would do maybe not as saturated. Same thing with other colors, green. Um, usually if you have like a natural background with like trees and bushes, you have greens in there and or if someone is wearing green. So that's uh, how you have, uh, adjust that. But in this image right here, I think that the colored, uh, the colors in the background, you can see that there's like some green and blue and like uh, what uh, the teal. That is quite distracting. So what happened is I'm just going to crank up the green and see where the greens are. As long as it's not on my subject, usually I don't mind turning down the saturation. So I'm just going to turn this one down by quite a lot, just to eliminate whatever distracting color that is there in the image. I believe there's a lot of teal and blue. So if I crank up the teal, you can see that there's a lot of teal in the background that it's not on the subject. So I don't mind turning it down like quite a bit just to make sure that my subject pops. But of course, if you want to keep that natural teal color in the image, then don't do this. This is just for this specific image right here. And if I think that the, uh, the teal is too bright, I can turn down the luminance of that as well, but I don't think it's doing too, too much. Again, there must be a lot of blue as well. You can see that all the rims here have this blue color. So I'm just going to tone it down to make all, almost like a black and white background, but don't do it too much. Again, this is just for demonstration. For magenta, this one is really tricky because my friend had um, a red lip uh, during the photo shoot. So if I adjust the magenta, it will affect the lips a lot. But Usually I will turn magenta down because it uh, depends on the lens that you're using. You might have some chromatic aberration that has a purple hue on the uh, super contrast, the bright and dark um, area. Let's say um, if you have like uh, the sun behind the subject and the hair should show like a purple fringing, I would usually turn it down to eliminate that. But because it's affecting my friend's lips, I'm not going to do too much. You can see that it's affecting the lips and also the bag. So I'm just going to maybe tone it down by a little. So that's that. That's usually how I would adjust the colors um, individually in an image. Even with uh, paid apps, I would do that too, just to make sure that it looks nicer. So without the adjustment, let me show you. This is without the adjustment. So everything is kind of cool with the teal in the background and the skin tone, it's really um, a little bit more pale. This is with the adjustment, a little bit healthier, the hair pops and the background, it's basically muted. Again, if you want to keep the colors in the background or whatever that is uh, in these like selections, go ahead. Don't, don't worry about that. Noise reduction, I don't touch it. Uh, I wouldn't use noise reduction because if you use noise reduction in any photos app, um, unless you're using the newer AI uh, noise reduction in certain apps, usually it's not that great. It will make the image really soft and muddy. So I don't want to touch that. And uh, sharpening this one, again, it's up to you. If you want super sharp image um, for, let's say a portrait session or a wedding photo, of course, yes, you can do that. But for creative purposes, usually I don't uh, increase the sharpness that much. You can tell that the image, once I zoom in using this slider right here, it's quite sharp already. It's not that bad at all. 
but if you really want to you can increase the intensity and also the edges to make the image a little bit sharper than before but don't go too far because it's gonna crank up the uh, uh the flaws on the the subject's face because i didn't do any touch up on this photo i'm going to talk about that very soon so this is before sharpening this is after nothing super obvious but you can tell by the hair at the corner that has been sharpened and if you zoom out it's going to be super sharp because i zoom in for like almost like 200 percent fall off is basically how smooth the sharpness is but usually you just need to play around with these sliders vignette it's up to you um it's a really creative choice like i usually don't do post vignetting this is like quite unnatural to me so if you increase the vignette it's going to look like this you, you can soften it to basically darken the outside of the image um vignetting um i would enjoy the natural vignetting from a lens instead of like adding it in post and the vignette here it's quite boring it's just a simple outside kind of darkness so this is before vignette this is after vignette i'm just going to remove it because i don't really like that kind of adjustment and this is how i would usually adjust the photo or edit the photo it looks really good already and let me show you the before and after again i can click onto this this is before this is the raw photo there's nothing wrong with the raw photo it looks pretty nice already fujifilm is known to have nice color especially their jpegs but with the adjustment you can tell that everything pops it gives a lot more um, healthiness to the subject by adjusting the color tone and also the contrast is much higher now compared to the original which is this one it's like the subject is kind of blending into the background a little bit too much so I kind of pop that by adjusting the contrast of the image using uh, tone curve and also the brightness again let's quickly recap um, I'm going to talk about uh, retouch very soon uh, let's recap the basic adjustment so for basic light adjustment I use the slider not auto because auto most of the time is really weird and for colors I use auto first and of course it's up to you that you can play around with the slider but for colors or color here uh, you can use auto it's not bad black and white if you want to make the color uh, make the image black and white you can do that but it's super weird I don't like the black and white here and we're going to talk about retouch later red eye unless you're using flash usually cameras don't really capture red eyes nowadays I don't know why they still have it but uh, yes it's a, it's good to have uh, options white balance as I said I suggest auto curves I suggest doing a basic S curve using the tone curve and if you really want to add in that color at uh, inside the shadows or highlight or mid-tone then go to the color curve levels I suggest don't touch it for now definition if you want a really crunchy photo go ahead but for portrait I don't touch it selective color this is where you really can play around with colors and make your image look nice and creative instead of a, a really plain photos because without this it looks really eh, simple and super low profile but this really pop uh, pop the color of the entire image noise reduction don't touch it sharpening yes you can adjust it if your image is uh, softer than you want you actually want like some like sharper image then go ahead but for creative purposes for uh, like film like photos I usually don't do that vignette up to you I don't use it let's talk about one last feature here that is quite interesting retouch this is really really interesting because retouch allows you to remove pretty much um, anything almost but again um, it depends on the image this is good for touch up um, if you want to remove some flaws on the subject's face you can go ahead and select the brush and you can adjust the size of the brush if you want to cover a bigger part and of course if you do it too much or if you're trying to remove a person in the background it might not look that natural but you can go ahead and brush or paint it and let's see it's actually not bad so this is with retouch 
Let me turn it off. This is off. And this is on. So it's really not that bad, to be honest with you, compared to other software. Of course, other software or apps, do you have AI now that can help you with that? But you know what? Like, this is not bad at all. You can even try to remove something that is like really not supposed to be removed, but you can still try it. Let's say this batch right here. See, like if you do it on something that is too much for the app to handle, it will look super unnatural. You can kind of do it, but it's still not the best. But I usually don't retouch anything because I want to keep the portrait section like natural because a lot of people, they correct the skin tone or, or not skin tone, but they correct the skin of the subject like to a point that it's like super flawless. Unless you're doing like a magazine job, I don't usually would do something like that unless there's something that is really obviously that I want to remove. So those are the adjustments, the main adjustments. As you can see, this is super powerful compared to a lot of paid apps already, and it's already built in as free. And this is original. This is the adjusted version. I'll show you a little bit more features that I found out while I was studying this app. So the other adjustments that you can do inside the Photos app adjustment you can go filters it's up to you they don't really look that nice anyway they look super dramatic so i don't use the filters crop is as simple as cropping when you click on crop it will for some reason do an auto crop for to, to adjust the straightness and the uh, uh, how straight the, uh, the image is and it will kind of crop in for you so i'll usually just reset it and do my own adjustment so let's say like now uh, to make this a little bit straighter and of course you can select the aspect ratio that you want the picture to be uh, in. So I think this is good enough. And yeah, this is already looking really, really good compared to before. Um, one thing to remind you after you do like the crop adjustment, you can't really use the um, original photo viewing button for whatever reason. I think it's a bug. So, all you need to do is to click on done and you're done adjusting this photo. Remember, you have to make sure that you have the R at the top right before you do the editing or else like you're editing the JPEG. So if I click on to edit again, see like this button is working again. And this is the original. This is the adjusted one. It's not going to show you the original uh, non-cropped version. So it's not going to like put it back into the original like orientation, but it's good enough. You can see how it looks like originally. And this is after the adjustment. Now let's jump straight to the next feature that I found really, really helpful for you to adjust more than one photo because on other paid apps like Lightroom, you can actually copy the settings and apply to all the photos that you want the exact same uh, adjustments done. Um, on the Photos app, I thought you cannot do something like that. And I thought that you have to do all the adjustment like one by one, and that's going to take like super long time if you have a lot of photos. So here is really, really cool. I just found that out, by the way. Thank you, you guys, for you know giving me the chance to learn about this app. So all you need to do is to go into the editing page of the specific photo that you want to copy the settings from, and you have to go to Image, and there is Copy Adjustments. Um, the cool thing is you can copy the adjustments from this photo and paste it onto any photos that you want. Um, the bad thing or the cons, I would say, is it doesn't allow you to select what kind of adjustment, um, light or color or black and white or, you know, curves. You cannot deselect anything. You have to copy everything. So that's one limitation, but it's still good enough. Like, so if you, once you copy that, one way to apply it to uh, the other photo is to exit out of this photo and find a photo with similar, I would say similar lighting, colors, and everything. So this photo looked like it's quite similar. I'm just going to click on edit. I forgot one thing. Yes, you have to actually, again, have to go to image and click on use raw as original in order to edit the raw photo instead of this is now in JPEG. So that's one really annoying thing. I wish they can allow you to uh, set the preference to use raw photo as original for all the photos that you imported. But anyway, I need to do that. Make sure that the, um, the R is there instead of the J. 
Now you go into the image editing page, select image at the top, at the top and select paste. And all the adjustments are pasted onto that, this image. But you'll notice that it's kind of weird because the brightness or the, uh, the light on this photo is different from the previous one. So you just need to do minor adjustment. Now you don't have to adjust everything. So I'm just going to turn down the shadow and maybe turn down the highlight a little bit because it seems like the entire image is a little bit too bright. But nothing dramatic. You don't really have to do too, too much anymore. Maybe I'll increase the contrast by a little bit, not too much again. Just some simple adjustment and now your image is looking good. It took me like, what, 10 seconds? This is the original photo, the raw photo. Super muted, which is good as a raw photo. And this is the adjusted one. So it looks really, really good to me already. So that's how you copy and paste adjustments from picture to picture. Again, a little bit not as user friendly as the other software or apps because you cannot paste the settings onto multiple photos. Even if you select everything, it's not going to allow you to paste anything. So you can't do that. You have to do it individually. And on different images, um, I would say if you want to do something like the pay apps can do, that allows you to save your own presets, which is all the adjustments into a file or a, a filter almost. And you can use it in the future to paste on other photos. You can't really do this here. It doesn't allow you to do this, at least for now. I don't know about uh, the future firmware updates, but you cannot do that for now because this is a free app and they shouldn't give you too, too, too much features um, at the beginning, I assume. But now you can actually save that picture in the import section of your photos app and use that as a preset. I know it's super annoying. You have to go all the way back to the photo that you really want to copy the adjustments and paste it onto future photos, but it, it's a workaround. It's a free app. Again, um, at least it comes with your Mac if you're using a Mac computer already, but now you cannot really do anything to save your presets. I wish they would allow you to do something like that. So that's how you can edit photos using the Mac photos app. And this is really, really good. It's super powerful. You don't have to pay anything. I really don't like having to pay a subscription fee to use a, an app that I use for, let's say work or any kind of creative purposes. So I really, really don't like that. Now let's talk about some of the cons of this photos app on the Mac for photo editing. And um, one really important thing is it doesn't really have any graphs that you can kind of use for um, monitoring. So the histogram is here, which is kind of weird. Like a lot of photo editing apps, they have the histogram on the other side or, or somewhere else that you can monitor if some channel is um, too bright or too dark. As you can see, I have some highlight that is clipping. It's probably the sky right here. So you have to look at this histogram instead of the histogram that usually the other apps provide somewhere else. So that's one thing. And before I mentioned that you cannot copy and paste the adjustments to more than one photo. That's just um, something that I hope they can add in in the future for batch editing. So you don't have to do like copy and paste every single time. But if it's for important photos, I don't mind doing that because I will do minor adjustments anyway. So that's that. So you cannot copy the presets or adjustments to multiple photos and you cannot save the presets as, as a filter that you can use in the future. So those are the uh, main thing about adjustments and it doesn't have split tone. So what that is, is basically uh, split toning or, or color grading they call in Lightroom right now. It's basically adding colors to shadow, mid tone or highlight to create that like um, really film like look. Cause um, sometimes when you watch like movies and films, they have certain colors, let's say in the shadow, let's say a really teal blue color in the shadow and really orangey color on the mid-tone skin tone. So you cannot do that here. So that's that. Um, but you can actually do that by using the color channel tone curve, as I said before. So if you want to add some greens into the shadows, you can still do that. But it's just a little bit more complicated than the other software. 
and it's not as easy. So that's a drawback using this app right here. And again, it doesn't have uh, a clarity slider. So that means you cannot make the image more dreamy. If you want something not as clear, a little bit hazy, then you can use the clarity slider in other apps, which is not available here. I hope that they can add it in in the future. And it doesn't have dehaze. Um, dehazing is basically the opposite of clarity almost. Um, when your image is kind of washed out by bright light source, that your image is not as contrasty, you can use the dehaze slider to the dehaze the image to remove that layer of haze on the image, but it doesn't have it. Uh, the Photos app does not have it. I'm just looking at my notes. Oh, another thing is you cannot add film grain onto the image. It doesn't even have that feature here. A lot of photo editing apps nowadays, they allow you to add in film grain to make the image look more like a film photo. And uh, I, I really like that feature, but it doesn't have it here. Um, I think it's okay. You can actually export this photo and use whatever app or photo editing apps on your phone or iPad to add in grains. I'm pretty sure there's like a free one that you can add in film grain. It's just basically a filter and it's a layer of grain that you can add in. So that's not a super big deal, um, but it's, I hope that they can add it in in the future as well. And <laughs> as I was showing you, it was really confusing importing photos. So if you want to import like specific photos, you can't really see what you're importing. I wish they can show you like a full size image like right now that you can just select and import those photos instead of what like looking at that tiny little thumbnail, it doesn't help at all. Um, another way is of course you can import all the new photos that way you have everything, but it's just time consuming to delete the photos that you don't want. So for conclusion, this photos app on Mac, it's completely free and it's super, super powerful. As you can see, I can literally adjust the photos the way like this from a really muted photo into a really color popping kind of image. So it's way more powerful than a lot of people think. Not many people talked about this because I don't even know why, but probably because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an app that comes with a computer and they assume that it's not powerful and it's free. Even the Apple page, the support page doesn't even talk about anything on this app. And I feel really, really weird. And this is completely underrated. Um, you can do a lot with this app already. So for beginner who just wants to try to edit photos now, or um, for people who don't want to spend the extra money, especially subscription money to pay for photo editing apps, this is a really, really good option or a really, really good alternative. I am super comfortable just using this app for my, uh, like for my jobs. I don't see any problem here. Of course, um, if you think that, oh, you need really fine tuning adjustments, maybe the pay apps will give you a lot more fine tuning adjustments or detailed uh, adjustments compared to this one. But I don't see really any problems or big problem that I, I, I don't hate the images coming out of this. That's the conclusion. So for beginners, for people who just started editing their photos, this is really good. You can start learning everything, all the adjustments by using this app already. So I would highly recommend beginners uh, or, or, or um, hobbyists to use, utilize this app instead of paying for like Lightroom or like uh, Photoshop or any other like Capture One. Uh, I think Capture One you just pay once, but still, this is really, really powerful. And if you one day outgrow all the features or the adjustments here, you think that you need more and you think you need something more powerful. Uh, again, for example, if you need like batch editing, like for an event or a wedding, then you really shouldn't do this. Like, cause I know for wedding photographers, they need to adjust like, I don't know, like, or edit thousands of pictures. So I don't think you want to do this one by one. So that's how I would um, start and then jump into the paid apps. And uh, yeah, and the last thing is, even if you use everything auto, the photo looks not bad at all. Like if like it's really, really, really not bad at all. Even if you use everything auto again, except brightness <laughs> for whatever reason, it's not that contrasty. Oh, it's not applying anything. Oh no, it is applying something. 
for whatever reason, brightness is really screwing up everything. So I wouldn't rely on that. But other things, let's say um, auto white balance, it's not bad. Like after clicking auto, it's not bad at all. Like the tone curve, um, it's not doing too much to this image right now. But even if you use auto for everything, it's not bad. So definitely try that. Play around with the auto settings and also the slider on top of each main categories. You will be surprised how good it is when it comes to adjustment. It makes everything looks really good already. So it's a really easy to use program and app that I feel like I really want to share with you guys. I'm so sorry that this video is taking forever. It's like super long now. I think it's like half an hour long or more. But I really want to tell you guys this is what I really enjoy using on my Mac computer to edit all my photos, pretty much all my photos. So and it's completely free. And yeah, that's it. That's how you edit photos for free on a Mac computer using the Photos app. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave it in the comment section below and I will really appreciate them. I'll see you in the next one.